Hi, so this is a video I never thought I'd be making. We have 100,000 subscribers. So because this is a massive deal for me, I thought I would do a special q and A. I I put out on my Twitter, my Instagram and my YouTube that I was going to do this and you guys have been sending me questions. I'm going to answer as many as I can. Obviously, I can't answer them all. There's been over 400. We would be here for like days. What made you start a YouTube channel? I started my YouTube channel in 2013. At that point in my life, I had just finished my GCSEs at school. So I had the whole of August with with no plans, didn't really know what to do with myself. So I thought YouTube would be a fun little project. It would work on my drumming, it would work on video editing, which I'd never done. It would work on recording drums, which I had no idea what I was doing. So it was just a bit of fun, really. How many subscribers did you think you would get? I've never thought, oh, I'm gonna get this many subscribers. So I feel like if you think like that, it's never gonna happen. When I started, I would tweet, oh, I wanna get 100 subscribers by Christmas. And I'd do it and I'd be like yeah but now I'm like you can get an idea of where you want to be but you can't predict this sort of stuff you can't predict views you can't predict subscribers you can't predict YouTube like you can't well maybe you can but I can't I don't know how does it feel being a celebrity I'm not a celebrity I'm not famous yeah there's a hundred thousand of you who subscribe to my channel but I'm just me like I'm just me. How does it feel having fans all over the world? Well, that is crazy. In fact, my top three countries of you guys that watch my stuff, the UK, where I live, isn't even on there. I think it's like America and Mexico and Brazil. I think they're the top three. Even on Instagram, you guys send me messages and you're from all over the place, places I've never been, some places I haven't heard of, and it's crazy. And you talk to me in your different languages and I use Google Translate and talk to you back, and it's cool, like, yeah, it's so cool. How does it feel knowing 100,000 people know you exist? Well, that is weird to think about. I sort of don't think about it. My brain can't comprehend 100,000 people. Like, even a 1,000 people was scary. 100,000, I just... I don't, e I don't know. How many times have you been recognised from YouTube? Zero. Although, that's a lie. I've been to drum shows and gigs a few times where I've spoken to people and mentioned that I do covers and they've been like, oh yeah, I've seen you. But I haven't just walked down the street, you know, one day and someone goes, oh my god, Minnie from YouTube. That's not, that's not happened and it probably never will. How did I react to the attention Stranger Things got? August was a stupid crazy month. I went from 2,000 to 90,000 subscribers, I think, something like that. It was a crazy time. And actually, the viral part, if you want to call it that, didn't happen that quickly. I think in like the first 19 days it had 46,000 views, which was ridiculous. Then in like 10 days it went from that to about half a million. My reaction was very overwhelmed. Suddenly I had all these subscribers and it was my first cover after I had really started blowing up, I guess it's so weird to say. I think it was actually my holiday cover and I remember I uploaded it and in 20 minutes it had had 1,000 views. You have to remember that before then it would take weeks, months for me to get 1,000 views. It happened in 20 minutes. Like, I had a panic attack. I was like, what is happening? So at the start it was scary. Now I'm not used to it. It's still crazy to me. But yeah, you guys are the best. What do you think is the reason for your success? I think the Stranger Things video is one of the main re well, probably the reason why my YouTube is where it's at. That video was just a mixture of a good idea and good timing, which I think a lot of the time is all you really need. But I think really when it comes down to it, my channel is an achievable one. You'd watch, I don't know, Matt McGuire and Luke Holland and think, I'm never going to be able to play that good. Whereas I feel like you can watch me and because my video quality isn't that great, my audio, again, isn't great. I just guess what I'm doing. I don't really know and my drumming isn't spot on every time. If I make a mistake, I'm just gonna leave it in. I'm not gonna edit it out and pretend I'm like an amazing drummer. You can watch me and be like, if I practice a bit, I can be like her. What I play most of the time isn't complicated stuff. Anyone who puts in the time to practice can easily do it, so 
that was a really long answer, sorry. A lot of you have been asking questions related to the process of doing covers. I'm actually going to do a video about it and show you all how I record, how I pick a song, to practicing it, to recording it, to editing it, to posting it. I know a lot of you would find that interesting, so I'm not going to go too much into detail right now. At the moment, I choose a song based on what you guys ask me to do, and then I'll practice it, and then I'll edit it. I'll record for a maximum of two hours. If I haven't got it in two hours, chances are I'm not going to get it. And then I do all the editing myself in Final Cut. I do all the mixing and whatever in Logic, and then I post it. Do I prefer vlogs or drum covers? I don't dislike doing vlogs, I actually really enjoy it sometimes, but it's so much more effort than drumming. You have to talk to a camera. This video, I'm probably gonna have so much footage and you won't see most of it, because half the time I'm just stood here like. Mm hmm. What am I gonna say? And then you have to watch it back to check it. Watching yourself talk is horrible. I like them both, but I prefer drum covers. Favourite cover you've done? So there's one cover. I've never posted it because it keeps getting blocked every single time. It's really annoying because I've worked so hard on it. Do you deal with sexism? No. I'm quite lucky in that. Yeah, I'll get the odd comment like, why isn't she in the kitchen? But you know what? You guys are really nice. Most of you are like, yeah, girls that play drums. Now we're on part two of the vlog, q and I don't know. I'm going to talk about drumming now. The most asked question is about how I started, what motivated me, how long I've been playing, what age I was when I started drumming, stuff like that. I'm going to do a video that's really in detail about how I started and how I got to where I am. So again, I'm not going to go into massive detail. Basically, I started when I was 10, at the end of primary school, year 6. I think that's about 10. Around that age, I was really into a show called The Naked Brothers Band on Nickelodeon. For those that don't know, that show was just like a bunch of kids in a band making music, having fun. I really liked the drummer, Alex Wolf. I wanted to be like him. I'd wear the band Bandanas, I'd wear the socks tied around my ankles and he had a red drum kit and I was like I want a red drum kit. So I got one for my birthday but then I didn't know what to do with it so we sold it a month later. But then like a year later my friend we were leaving school so we were like let's get a band together that would be cool we could play Schools Out by Alice Cooper the first song I learned to play. The only problem was that there wasn't a drummer so I was like I'll do it. I'd never played before but I'll give it a go and then I moved up to secondary school and I started having lessons at school and then out of school so there was a point where I was having two lessons a week then I went to uni and did a degree in drums and yeah that's really my journey I guess who are my drum idols I'm not going to name all the obvious people because I don't see the point I'll just name people that have influenced me in the sense that they taught me something or I genuinely look up to them. Really it's just drummers like Shri Sose who might be watching this right now in which case you're right mate. <laughs> But then also like Didi Legrand, I think she's amazing, Eddie Thrower, and actually Matt McGuire is one of my main idols. When I started YouTube, obviously, he was on YouTube. I just really liked his drumming. And actually, fun fact for you, he's commented on my bad guy cover. That was a big deal. What is my favourite song to drum to? I don't know. Anything where I can play simple stuff, but then there's space to play complicated stuff, I guess. I love playing along to Cad Rodriguez's stuff and Anna Niles' stuff, but I'm not a super technical choppy drummer so maybe I'll post a video of that one day just for fun but like I said I don't see myself as technically good so I don't know if I want to expose myself like that. What is my practice routine? In my old routine I would do four hours a day. One hour would be just warming up on a pillow like in front of the TV or something and then I'd do an hour of hard stuff and then I'd have a break and eat some food and then I'd do another hour of hard stuff and then I'd have another break eat more food and then I'd just mess around for an hour. That was quite hard to maintain because it's a lot of drumming. Before my YouTube I would do it, try and do an hour a day. Have you ever hit your face with drumsticks? Yes. <laughs> but yeah, no, all the time and it really hurts. A lot of you have been asking for advice, like a lot of you are just starting out and are wanting to know what to practice, what you should be working on. I guess I'd just say focus on your rudiments. Practice your paradiddles, practice your doubles, practice your singles, practice your paradiddle diddles. They'll help massively, but also do stuff slowly. Don't rush to doing stuff quick, I know it's tempting, but actually if you play stuff slowly, playing quick will be easier. A lot of you want me to do lessons and things, I'm definitely considering it. Let me know if you are 
not interested in learning from me and I'll see if I can put some stuff together. Have I learnt music theory? Yeah, I did grade 5 music theory and then I went to uni where we would have music theory lessons. I'm not great at it though. You tossed your drumstick in the air during a song. Who inspired you or influenced you to do that? Nobody that I know of. When I had drum lessons growing up, I'd always be early and have time to kill. So for like 5-10 minutes, I'd just stand there doing this. Just because there was nothing else to do. And as, as you can see, I'm really good at it. I've always been a performer, I guess, more than a drummer. I like putting on a show for people. I like people having a good time. I like making people smile. So throwing my sticks in the air, I know it's annoying to drummers because it's just showing off and it's not drumming, but a lot of you guys like it and it's fun to do and it looks cool. So yeah, I don't know who inspired me. I must have just watched it and seen it, but I don't know. Do you ever talk to your drum kit? Yeah, look. Hey drums, you're looking good. They're so chatty. Which styles can you play and what do you think about expanding them? Going to uni and studying drums, in classes you learn loads of styles. So I feel like if you threw me a song in a random genre, I'd know enough to be able to get through it. Expanding them, I would love to be better at jazz. Getting the feel, getting the swing, the independence of the left hand versus the right. It's hard. What other instruments can you play? I'm going to tell you in chronological order. I started playing recorder and then I was put on to treble and then I started clarinet and then I started guitar and then bass and then drums and then piano and then percussion so like timpanis and marimba, xylophone and then ukulele I guess. Now we're going to move on to quickfire stuff. A lot of you have asked random questions like, I don't know, what's your shoe size? Although no one has asked me that actually. So we're gonna do that right now. Let's go. How old are you? 22. Birthday. 8th of August. What consoles do you play slash favourite video game? At the moment I have a Nintendo Switch, my favourite game on that, Mario Kart, Crash Bandicoot. I'm really into Uno actually at the moment. But then also I have a PS4 and my favourite games on that is GTA 5 and Spider-Man. Favourite bands slash artists, Walk Off the Earth, Paramore, Yonaka, Yonaka are so sick, you need to listen to them. Favourite song, maybe Hard Times by Paramore. Favourite music genre, rock, pop, heavy stuff, depends on the mood, honestly, I like everything. Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Are you single? Yes. Harry Potter house? I think I'm a Hufflepuff. Favourite food? Pizza. Star Trek or Star Wars? Star Wars. Sexual orientation? Bye. Favourite childhood cartoon? Recess. Country you'd like to visit? I'd love to go back to America. I'd love to go to Mexico. I'd love to go to Brazil. I'd love to go everywhere. Favourite season? I really like summer, but then I'd love winter. I love Christmas, but then I love warm weather. So Christmas, when it's warm, would be Favourite instrument to play? Drums. To listen to? Piano. Would you dye your hair? You know, I've been tempted, but they always say you're so lucky to have that hair colour, so I feel like I can't. Because this is my natural colour, obviously. If you could collab with anyone, who would it be? I feel like the obvious answer is walk off the earth. I mean, who wouldn't want to collab with them? Do you speak Spanish? C. Sí. Hablo un poco de español. Lo estudié en la escuela. So I can sort of understand it and speak it, but not really. I'm not fluent and my accent is probably terrible. I probably just said that all wrong. If I did, I'm so sorry. All the comments that are not in English, I put into Google Translate. Don't be fooled. I'm not like fluent in every single language. Can you play sticks with your drums? Yeah. Disney fan. Obviously, that is the end of the Q&A. Hopefully I answered questions that you wanted to know and you've learned something new about me. If you have a question that I didn't answer in this video, you can follow my socials and ask me a question on there. I try to reply to every message, every comment, but sometimes it'll take a while. So if you like waiting a week, don't give up. I will get to you eventually. Thanks everyone for subscribing. Thanks for being so nice to me, making me feel loved. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Oh, and also for all of you that complain, this is for you. Although I'm really scared because the camera's so close and I don't want to hit it. Maybe we'll just like... Maybe not.